she is a mom just like you might be. Uh, she has kids in school or should be in school. And she has uh, started a new pack called Keeping Kids in School. Uh, she was has been just like you really upset about the school closure. She said that she had an idea that the teachers unions were involved and then something happened and she said, I received the evidence. Clarice is with us now. Hello, Cl- Clarice. Hi, Glenn. I, I heard you slip in that. Hello, Clarice. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it's a real, it's a real pleasure to be with you today. Thank you very uh, much. Yes. Uh, so I filed this right to know and got an email back from so, the teachers union president. Crazy, what, right? What is the uh, right to know? Is that like a Freedom of Information Act kind of thing? That's correct. Yep, right. that's exactly what it is. All right. And you filed that with whom? So I filed that with my specific school district, Tapper Horsham, in the state of Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, but we have hundreds all over the state of Pennsylvania trying to prove this union strong arming. Okay. And you you wrote to them and said what? I want to know what. I want all correspondence between the superintendent and all the union officials. So correspondence, I laid it out, emails, text messages, uh, any conversation memo between, which is this union rep is Brian Moore and our superintendent. Every school has a union representative. So I encourage everyone to file these right to know. Okay. That is, I didn't even know you could do that. That's fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, you filed it, and what did you get back? What did you find? <laughs> so um, I got about 70 emails back, uh, and, and what I put in there was I want all emails between March 2020 and March 2021 that include in-person return or COVID. I, I, did, I put some keywords in there, and I received this email back, and it's so, so disturbing he, the president of the teachers union notes, we are not a child care center. I fear babysitting drove parents to demand an in, amount of in-person instruction. That is gut-wrenching, not just for parents, but also for teachers. He has totally disregarded the importance and how essential our teachers are. They're not babysitters. They're educators. So wait a minute. So that was in the the memo from a union uh, boss to the teachers. This is an email from Brian Moore, uh, teachers union president for Hamhapara Horsham School District, sent directly to our superintendent, encouraging him to keep the schools closed because he was trying to open them. He says, for the record, and I can't stress this enough, I do not believe it's the correct decision to keep moving ahead with a planned return for high school students. As I pointed Mm -hmm. out yesterday, bringing those students back just to return them to remote instruction is plainly illogical. Additionally, hybrid instruction is poor and unsupported by empirical evidence for effective curricular instruction. Perhaps it has some social and emotional benefits, but it's not a better option than remote instruction. We're not a child care center, and I fear babysitting drove parents to demand an amount of in-person instruction. Uh, he says, uh, as we've said along, uh, all along the way, we need to follow the science, and I completely agree. The science is telling us we should not have students in school, and decisions are being made to appease political needs rather than doing what's best for the kids. So he's accusing this superintendent of bowing to political needs. Is That's that... correct. <laughs> yes. Are you ready for the icing <clears throat> on the cake? Sure. Brian Moore, president of Teachers Union, sends his daughter ever since August five days a week in-person instruction to a Catholic school. Uh, how could he do that if he finds it to be really dangerous? I would love to know that question. And I mean, I would love to know that answer. I mean, I would love to speak to him face to face at this point. (laughs) Uh, you know, our children are really suffering at the greatest extent. I mean, really, truly, I know, you know, the anxiety, the depression, the failing rates. 
I mean, what about the people that can't afford that option? Like he chose Catholic school. We're already paying so much money in school taxes. And then here he's sending his child. It's just, it's just so heartbreaking. Our kids have not been in school for a year, Glenn. I know. A year. I know. My daughter hasn't been in school for a year. My son, oh, you can so opt, hard. you can opt in or out. And my son has opted in to go into school, but he's still a couple times a week. You know, mm-hmm. he's doing the hybrid hybrid thing. Uh, and right. and when he goes to school, it is like some sort of. I don't know, uh, scientific, uh, you know, boy in a bubble kind of atmosphere Mm -hmm. where everybody is behind plexiglass and you can't leave your desk and you have to eat at your desk for lunch. It's, I mean, it doesn't even sound like school. That's right. It's affecting him and his, uh, his depression level. And it's really not good. So, what do you? What is going to happen in this school district with with Brian Moore? Well, what he says, hybrid's not good, right? He says it's poor and unsupportive, unsupported. So, I'm pushing for full return. I mean, you're you the one that's he's the one that said it. You know, it's poor and unsupported. So, I'm hoping. Um, that they take this and open our schools five days, uh, just as they should, just as many scientists and doctors recommend for the welfare of our children. But I will also note, I do believe, and I hate to get this to even be political, but I believe that people have to show up at the polls and start really knowing their candidate of who they're voting for for school boards. And and who's owned oh, by yeah. the union and who's not? Oh yeah, I would yep. uh, I would completely agree with you on that. Now, mm-hmm. seeing that the CDC has come out uh, and mm-hmm. said mask mandates <clears throat> and restaurant restrictions have small impact on the coronavirus cases, I would assume that would be the same for schools. And the American Pediatrics has come out and said you've got to put kids back into school. What science is he talking about that uh, suggests that the teachers have to stay home? He does refer to the Pennsylvania Department of Health. But that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I know. I mean, we, we know I mean, who is running that. He's uh, she's now that's right. she's now that's in the right. Biden administration. <laughs> that's right. Dr. Levin. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So OK. So. It's troubling. I mean, I just I I appreciate the time to bring light to this because our kids and just like your son and daughter need this so much. Every single child needs this. We have children that with keeping kids in school that have contacted us, their parents that are experiencing homelessness and they use school for much more than school. Right. We cannot continue this. This has to end. We have kids that are going to gun violence, drug, drugs. I mean, it. It has to end. We're giving our children no outlet. We're giving them no no road or path to succeed. So, Clarice, what about the uh, you know the the argument that as conservatives, I can't believe we're we're demanding these schools open up. There's mm-hmm. a story out today that says in in kindergarten they're going to start talking uh, about uh, sexual identification and oh, yeah. even anal sex, five year olds. I mean, mm-hmm. what are we doing? Why, I mean, isn't there part of you that says, I don't want these schools to open back up? Um, it's a great fear. But maybe we should start looking stronger at school choice. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe we should. Because I know that I know many parents that cannot afford sure. the option, you know, of private institution or whatever, whatever that is. But maybe, maybe the answer is school choice. And I got to tell you, I, I've always been an advocate for public schools. I, I always have. And I thought that they were cornerstones of our community. But with the email that I shared from you with the union strong arming and then you telling me about the curriculum changes, how can we how can we allow our children to 
to experience this kind that that it's disturbing. It's really we, disturbing. We must look at something else. We so, must. So um, if anybody wants to get a hold of you and um, and join your your movement, you you have yes. keepingkidsinschool.com. What will you find there? That's right. Uh, keepingkidsinschool.com. We if you join our movement, we can provide you with all the information on how to uh, re- do the right to know request. We have templates that help people, you know, file them in their own district. Um, In the state of Pennsylvania, you'll see the candidates of who we're endorsing. But we can also help create other PACs. We helped uh, Oregon create a PAC. We helped New York City create a PAC um, to really start getting people out of the polls and knowing the candidates that they're voting for and understanding what platform that candidate stands for instead of just walking into the polls and voting. Mm. Well, I, I hope you get lots of calls from uh, Texas and uh, all around the country uh, because Thank I you. think what you're doing is really important. If we are not involved at the local level, we lose everything. And right. it's, uh, it's, it's possibly more important for all of us to be involved in our school boards <clears throat> than even the presidential or Senate races. Keeping, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> keepingkidsinschool.com is the uh, address to go. Thanks, Clarice. I appreciate it. Thank you. You Thank bet. Thank you.